Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Glenn Williams. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Board of Directors for Pride Toronto. Thank you for coming tonight. Beside me to my right is Alika Hall. She's the other co-chair, my better half, uh, with the Board of Directors of Pride. And we're uh, happy to have all of you here tonight and anxious to start the discussion. We've seen the community grow. And there's, a, there's been opportunities for the community to have these dialogues. And I can't even remember how many town hall meetings I've attended. Um, but certainly it's been more than one or two. And I've always thought about how wonderful it is that this particular community, which is my community, the community that I belong to, has always been able to create the opportunity for dialogue. community has had to fight for a rightful place in the Pride Festival. Fight for space, fight for recognition, and fight for support. So when we received these demands, we understood that they are, they are reflective of a long and difficult history between Pride and Black queer communities. Many of the Prides in the U.S. have a Black Pride and they have a regular Pride. The fact that we have one Pride in this city, in this diverse and multicultural city, is a testament to the work that we as a community have done to understand our different lived experiences, challenges, and triumphs. Following the parade, comments were made in the media that suggested we had no intention of meeting these demands. Let me be clear in saying those comments misrepresented our organization's position. the vast majority of the demands are within the organization's ability to implement. We accept um, BLM's request to remove all police floats as a submission to our dispute resolution process. As part of our next steps, we will compile feedback from this week's meetings, as well as the over 1,000 emails that we've received so far. We do expect to announce our DRP panel later the next month, actually, so September. As we get started, we really just want to let you know that as a board, we take this discussion and this responsibility very seriously. Uh, it's the most challenging and complex issue that we faced, uh, which is why we need and we are looking forward to hearing from all of you here tonight. For pretty much the entire time that I have been out, I have never once felt particularly enfranchised by the Sunday March. As we you know, saw the increase in corporatization and the erosion of any sort of political content from the Sunday March. And we began to feel increasingly as though this was an affluent, white, gay man's event. And since that's not me, I stopped going. And many of us stopped going if we felt like that wasn't us. There's programming for dogs at Pride and there's no programming for senior LGBTQ people. Hey. It's time for those of us who do experience privilege, acknowledged or not, um, to start really listening and, and to do research and not e expect our one or two black friends to do all the educating of us for us because we have the ability to go out and do research. We have the internet. It's this wonderful thing that I hope people realize how fragile Pride Toronto. It's very easy to see all those statistics and think that it's fabulous, but I want everybody to remember that Pride organizations have gone bankrupt, have failed all over the world. It's, it shouldn't be a political pinata. It's something that we have to work hard to protect and preserve. Lots of people in the world would be extremely grateful to have the event that we have. Some people feel afraid of having the police in the parade and some people feel afraid not having the police in the parade. Those are two truths which we have to accept. Some people feel afraid seeing the police in uniform, some feel afraid not seeing the police in uniform. But the reality we have to acknowledge is that the symbols matter. Symbols matter to people here, and the symbols matter to people globally. Just to let you know, having two, uh, two minutes for, for my message is really not enough because I'm using sign language. I have to have four minutes, I'm sorry. I contacted, or you know, the deaf community contacted Pride Toronto in February to hire interpreters of color again and again and again and again until finally, it wasn't until June 26th that I got some kind of feedback 
And there was no time for preparation. There was absolutely, I mean, it was all at the, the last minute, the 11th hour. This should have been done months ago. Thank you. I just came here like a month and a half ago to initiate a refugee claim. So my point is, if we're going to still ostracize ethnic communities who are, who, in which there's still many people, you know, still hiding in the closet because maybe they are afraid of being mistreated by their own people, then we are, you know, closing the door for diversity. I want all the black queer people, if you feel comfortable, stand up. Stand up, stand up. Now I want all the people of color, stand up, stand up. I want all the transgender people to also stand up. Please, stand up. I want all of you guys to raise your hands. How many of all, you all had faced violence because of the police? 25 years ago, I would not be standing here in Quebec while I was going to work. I was jumped by the cops 25 years ago. And the reason why I didn't run, because Marcellus Francois, Presley Leslie, Anthony Griffin was etched into my mind. That's 25 years ago. So Black Lives Matter. I want to just say something. And I got to say something this. You stood up and you gave me my dignity because I couldn't do nothing 25 years ago. And my friends who stood up and said, Don, you have to be part of this. Why? Because this is about social justice. And social justice, people, cannot be bankrolled. Because let's face it, okay, Pride has been bankrupt for a long time. Because if there wouldn't be, have been a dyke parade, there wouldn't have been a transgender parade, there wouldn't even have a block hole stage, okay? So let's get with the situation. Let's stop denying, let's stop delaying, and let's stop being defeatist and just stop trying to brush racism away. Let's not use dispute mechanisms, because trust me, back in 2010, a simple, similar process was done by the late Mayor Ford and his cronies to deny Pride its funding by pitting two community groups against each other. You know what my father used to say? Two for Patty, four for Nice. That is the politics of division. That is the politics that I'm urging Pride to reject. Please, community group, this was a fight that's been happening for years. Even when I organized as a member of the bear community, we were always shoved in the back. Please, Pride, listen. This is, Pride is not just about money. It's not just looking about fabulous. Trust me, I like to look fabulous too. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you Honey, to wrap up, please? I got two minutes because I'm a gay man and I, I'm late for time. Okay, I want to just say this. When an individual is participating in protesting society's refusal to acknowledge his dignity as a human being, he or she's very act of protest confers dignity onto him. And that's what Black Lives Matter to all of From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, it's not lost on me that Black Lives Matter has done more for my community and me as a white, transgender, queer woman than in many ways Pride Toronto has done over several years. Okay, last thing. Please switch back from a governance board to an act active board. You put too much hands, you allowed too much power to flow into the hands of one self-serving white cis man. Thank you. Please, thank you. Thank you. I don't believe that exclusion is the way to foster proper change and equality and everyone getting along with one another. Um, I don't believe the police should be banned from the parade because despite everything that happened so many years ago, it's a symbol of how far we've gotten today to allow the police... Please let the person speak, thank you. To allow the police to be... to participate in Pride and... Um, Another thing I'd like to mention is that I believe it's totally within Pride Toronto's right to not tolerate aggressive behavior from any group, even if they are the chosen honored group of the, of the Pride Parade. And I came across a guy, a person of color, if it matters, being uh, attacked. So I stopped and I went back and he said, call the police. So I did. And they showed up really quickly 
uh, and they proceeded to m aggressively misgender another trans woman who was there and a witness, and it later turned out a refugee, uh, who later told me that the police here are more aggressive than the country that she came from. Uh, when I told the police officer, and this is where I'm going to get anxious, I, when I told the police officer to stop, that he was misgendering her, and that he needed to use she, he got up in my face, got even more aggressive with me, took out his cuffs, and threatened to arrest me. Yeah. It was my fault. I shouldn't have called the police, and I shouldn't have called the police, even though he said, call the police. Because as I was leaving, they were surrounding him, saying, oh no, he hasn't been stabbed, but he's bleeding, and, and giving him the fifth degree. Right? He's the one who got attacked. The guys who attacked him are up the street, but they don't care. They, don't, they, don't, they said to me, we don't need your report. Go and do your research and stop fucking saying all lives matter and why are they doing that? Thank so you. understand why they have now come to the forefront and say enough is enough. We would not be here without the love. And I want to say this to you as well. Why are we giving so much power as a community away to a corporation? Why? They're coming to us because all eyes are on us, those advertising dollars. Those are our dollars. So huh? I will wrap it up by saying this. Take that ugly mural and put it on the police station if you actually want to apologize to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Our support of BLMTO extends without question to their demand for no police participation in Pride. Police violence in our communities affects us all, but it overwhelmingly harms black, indigenous, and trans people. BLMTO is doing this work for all of us. I came from a homophobia island to come here to Toronto, and I'm, tr I'm walking through which we call the village to have that being lashed at me because I'm black and I'm queer. It's not like a small little wound. This is like four or five hundred years of bullshit. Right? And so we're here, and you know the interesting thing is you call us violent and you call us aggressive, but we approach you at your humanity because we ask you to stand up to your honor, to stand up to what you put in place. We don't come at you with the same shit that you came with us with, because if we did that, you wouldn't be here. But because of our humanity and our blackness, um, we can't do that to you. We wouldn't be okay with ourselves. You see the savagery that we have had to endure and are enduring currently when we walk out into the street. When I left my home today and I felt, felt the homophobia and the racism at the same time, do y'all know what that feels like? So, so I know I'm over two minutes, but at the same time, it's just like, this is long, y'all. We're tired. You think we want to be up there stopping a parade? No. Like, no, actually, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I just wanted to say that, first of all, we're all really, really busy. And I uh, just wanted to point out that I wasn't given the full information about the meeting. And I think your slide is wrong because it says town hall meetings. It doesn't say town hall meeting about blackness. We're talking about blackness for two hours, and we're not talking about the fact that we're talking about blackness. And as a result, things have played out in a certain way. You've had very particular people speak on behalf of the organization and as part of the facilitation, and I noted who they were, and that is about blackness, and that is about the fact that we're talking about blackness. So I think that for the meeting tomorrow, you should clarify in your communication, and you should also fix your slide. So this is out of our generosity that we're here. We are giving you a gift. We're giving you a gift of our time. We're giving you a gift of our life. And we're giving you a gift of our brilliance. And it's really unfortunate that in the presence of this awesome, wonderful space, this gift that we're giving, you're sitting behind a glass wall with no communication. You didn't say, please come and talk at us and we will not say anything. You said, please come to a town hall. You didn't say, please come to a town hall about blackness, but we're not gonna talk about blackness, but we're gonna let you talk about blackness while we sit in a long line of mostly white silence. I think you need to work on your communication. And for the rest of us, we can meet afterwards and make a plan. Thank you. Thank you, it's, uh, thank you for your time, for your attention, and for your comments. Uh, the, the small round tables will be here as well tomorrow starting at 6.30. Thank you for coming. <laughs>